Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most ambitious and misunderstood projects in the entire blockchain ecosystem, the Internet Computer Protocol, better known as ICP. This project isn't just another cryptocurrency or smart contract platform, it's something far more radical. ICP has taken on the impossible to rebuild the internet itself, but this time fully decentralized. Imagine an open source, censorship resistant alternative to your favorite Web2 apps. A decentralized Google, a user owned version of Twitter, and an encrypted on chain messenger that could replace WhatsApp, all running on a single decentralized network. That's not science fiction anymore. It's happening right now on the internet computer. In this video, I'll walk you through exactly what's unfolding, from real Web 2 to Web 3 migrations to the roadmap behind this shift. We'll explore why ICP might become the foundational layer of the next trillion dollar digital economy and why understanding it today could put you years ahead of everyone else. So if you're ready to learn about the backbone of the new decentralized internet, stick around, because what I'm about to share could genuinely reshape how you see the future of technology and finance. This video is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not financial advice. Always do your own research and consult a professional before making any investment decisions. Let's begin with a short story, one that perfectly explains how we got here. For decades, we relied on what we call big tech. These were the companies that gave us everything, free email, search engines, cloud storage, and social media platforms. From Gmail to WhatsApp, from Google Drive to Reddit, these services became the backbone of our digital lives. But there's a dark truth hidden behind the word free. You were never the customer. You were the product. Every email you sent, every photo you uploaded, and every message you typed was quietly stored and analyzed on centralized servers. Your data, your clicks, habits, and preferences became their most valuable commodity. These companies sold access to your attention, shaping what you see, what you believe, and even what you buy. And here's the dangerous part. Because everything lives on their centralized infrastructure, one decision, one error, or one policy change could delete your entire digital footprint. If they decide to censor you, suspend your account, or simply lose your data, you have no recourse. That's the fragile architecture of Web2, an internet controlled by a handful of gatekeepers. Think of Web2 like a vault owned by someone else. You might have access to the safe, but they have the master key. They can peek inside whenever they want, lock you out without warning, or charge you just to keep using what's already yours. Now, Web3, and specifically ICP, flips that model completely. The Internet Computer Protocol is like a global network of digital vaults, all cryptographically linked and secured by mathematics rather than human authority. No single company, not even the developers who created it, can unilaterally take control or alter your data. It's not just trustworthy, it's trustless. That distinction is crucial. Trustless systems don't require you to believe in an intermediary. The cryptography enforces the rules automatically. This is where the revolution truly begins. ICP introduces something called Internet Identity, a next-generation login system that eliminates passwords entirely. Instead of depending on centralized services like Google or Facebook for authentication, you use your own biometric or secure device key, your fingerprint, your face ID, your hardware token, to prove who you are. Big tech can't crack it, can't copy it, and can't revoke it. You own your identity outright. That alone is a massive leap forward for data sovereignty and user security. Then there's the transformation happening in social media. Platforms like District and DSCVR are emerging as decentralized alternatives to Twitter and Reddit. These aren't mere clones. They're fundamentally new ecosystems where the rules are written in code, not in corporate policy. Content moderation, platform upgrades, and even funding decisions are governed by community consensus through smart contracts. No single entity dictates what's acceptable or not. The users, people like you and me, collectively steer the direction of the platform. Next up, look at the communication and financial layers. Apps like OpenChat aim to replace WhatsApp, Bitfinity Wallet rivals PayPal, and decentralized email systems are stepping in for Gmail. The common theme across all these innovations is data sovereignty. 
Everything, from front-end interfaces to back-end databases, runs entirely on-chain, secured by the ICP network. This isn't partial decentralization, it's total ownership. To put it simply, most Web3 apps today still rely on centralized cloud servers like AWS or Google Cloud, but ICP's architecture removes that dependency altogether. You're not just sending encrypted messages through someone else's system, you're using an internet that you collectively own. It's like the difference between mailing a locked letter through a post office Web 2 versus owning the entire fortified postal system yourself, ICP. That's the scale of what's changing here. Here's why this is such a big deal. ICP isn't just a decentralized finance DeFi network. It's a decentralized internet, a full stack alternative to the centralized infrastructure we depend on today. That means ICP can host complex applications at scale, not just smart contracts or NFTs, but entire social networks, e-commerce sites, streaming platforms, and enterprise software, all directly on chain. The implications? Trillions of dollars in global digital value are up for grabs. And here's where it gets actionable for investors and users alike. You can't understand what makes ICP revolutionary until you actually use it. Create an internet identity, explore district or open chat, and see how seamlessly they operate. The moment you realize these decentralized apps work as fast and smooth as their Web2 counterparts, without a middleman, you'll understand why this transition is inevitable. Step 2. Understand the foundation. For decentralized economies to function, they need scalability, low cost, and high speed. ICP provides all three in one unified architecture. It allows developers to build without relying on Amazon's or Microsoft's centralized data centers. That's what gives ICP its edge. It's the infrastructure that could replace the cloud itself. Every time a new major application successfully launches on the internet computer, it acts as a validation event, proving that the network can handle real-world demand. These moments attract new users, more developers, and greater capital, all of which fuel adoption and growth. We're already seeing this with Caffeine AI, an ICP-powered AI platform launching soon. It's expected to scale to millions of users, potentially billions, demonstrating that decentralized applications can compete head-on with global Web2 giants. This kind of adoption wave is what drives exponential network value, and if you wait too long, you risk missing it entirely. Let's zoom out. The current internet, centralized, data-hungry, and fragile, simply isn't built for what's coming next. Artificial intelligence, humanoid robotics, and the explosion of machine-to-machine -machine communication demand infrastructure that is secure, autonomous, and censorship-proof. Web2 can't handle that future. Its centralized model is inherently limited and vulnerable. It's controlled by corporations, easily targeted by governments, and constantly exploited through surveillance-based monetization. In an era of global tension, cyber warfare, and increasing digital fragmentation, this centralized internet will eventually collapse under its own weight. That's why ICP exists, to lay down the groundwork for a new, decentralized, and sovereign internet one where governments, businesses, and individuals can operate independently and securely without depending on a single point of failure. To sum it all up, the Internet Computer Protocol isn't just another blockchain experiment. It's the blueprint for the next phase of the Internet, one that prioritizes privacy, freedom, and user ownership. It redefines how we build, communicate, and transact online. From decentralized identity to full-stack dApps, ICP proves that a user-owned web isn't a dream anymore. It's a reality that's already operational. We're standing at the edge of one of the biggest paradigm shifts in technology history. The old internet, the one controlled by centralized corporations, is slowly dying. The new internet, powered by protocols like ICP, is being born right now. If you want to stay ahead of that curve, start exploring, start experimenting, and start understanding how this ecosystem works. Because those who recognize these tectonic shifts early are the ones who shape the next digital economy. So, what do you think about ICP's current position? Are you bullish on its growth in AI and DeFi? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you found value in this deep dive, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more breakdowns like this. Thanks for watching. Stay curious, stay cautious, and I'll catch you in the next one.